as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. It says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, with winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Welcome, my viewer. That is a scripture we are going to to be reading and studying it. It's about seasons and time. And we will understand the operations of God in every season. So welcome to the program. My name is Mary Rose Maina. In the other program, we talked about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the chosen one, the anointed one. That was in the first program. And the second program, we also talked about how you can seize an opportunity to have Jesus visit you and transform your life by allowing him to be Lord and Savior of your life. I'm glad each day I have an opportunity to share about Jesus. It makes my heart warm. And so we are going to see how we can prepare ourselves for such a moment where we can seize a moment have our Cairo moment, a moment of grace, where the Lord will freely work in our lives to transform us, to help us to act according to his will and purpose. And so we are going to look at uh, something called Kronos. Kronos is not uh, a very uh, new word because it's talking of seasons, it's talking of, of times, and uh, it's coming from the word chronological. We can see uh, chrono, chronos is described as a specific chronological order of events or something. It is also sequential and many, uh, uh, and, and it moves like it moves in a sequence where we can, we can say seed time. Where in seed time, it is time to, to, to put the seed down. And then we have harvest, where we are harvesting that seed. And so, um, as we, we prepare ourselves spiritually, because as we said earlier in the other program, that the spiritual laws govern the physical or the natural. And that is why the Lord was telling uh, Noah, after all the other people were wiped out, wiped out except Noah and his family, and the animals that the Lord had commanded him to, to keep, we see the Lord uh, shelved Noah as a seed because it's about seasons. God always works with seasons. But every time the Lord would have us prepare our hearts or prepare our, our, our lands, like now if a farmer uh, will want a bountiful uh, harvest, 
that farmer, the, the bountiful harvest will, determine, uh, the, will, will be determined by how well prepared the farmer will be, how well he prepares the land for a bountiful uh, uh, harvest. And so, because God works within the spiritual law, which I believe Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, it is a spiritual law, where the Lord is bringing it into our attention that we will operate in seasons to be able to be successful in our lives. For example, we were once small children and we were being fed. It will reach a point you cannot be fed. You feed yourself. You go to, 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 to lower primary, you go to upper primary, you go to high school, then university, and you see responsibilities keep on changing. And so we say season, uh, 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 one season changes for another season. And that is why we are seeing uh, cold and heat in verse 22. And we also see winter and summer. And we also see day and, and night. And the Lord is saying, because it is a spiritual law, it shall never cease. So while we are working within that, uh, 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 that law, we will need the Holy Spirit to prepare. We will need the Holy Sp uh, Spirit to prepare so that our spiritual uh, land, our spiritual soil will be able to be well toiled and well prepared and well moisted uh, 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 to receive the spiritual seed, which is the word of God, which we receive by faith. And so we are going to, um, to be looking at how when we prepare our, our hearts by the word of God, which we are going to get also in the, in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 13 from verse 3 onwards. And we are still on the person of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do for us when we give him uh, uh, the opportunity and we seize the, oppo we seize the opportunity when he comes into our lives at a given season. And so uh, we are seeing that a seed must be covered. The, 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 the land must be prepared well. And when it is covered, uh, you could put down one seed or two seeds and you can receive 30, 60 or 100 fold uh, depending on how well you are prepared. And since the Lord is calling us for multiplication, uh, and that is why Jesus sent us into the whole world to go and preach the gospel of the good news. Jesus expects us. Uh, that is what he says in, in Matthew, uh, Matthew 28. He's sending us. And even as we heed to, to the call to go out and preach uh, uh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, because blessed are the feet of those that carry the good news. We are seeing in, uh, in chapter 28, uh, chapter 28 and verse 16, it is, uh, it's about the Great Commission. And then the 11, we can start from verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority, and this is after Jesus has died and is risen, and his commissioning, uh, his commissioning uh, the disciples. And I believe we, we also fall into that category of being commissioned. All authority 
verse 18, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, not in any other name. Viewers, we are not going to baptize anyone in the name, in any other name. It's only in the name of the Father, who is the Almighty God, and of the Son, who is the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross, taking away the punishment that befitted us. And he has now risen. He's risen and he's seated at the right hand of God. And unto the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit whom Jesus said he's not leaving us as orphans, but he's leaving us with the Holy Spirit who is going to guide us into all truth. truth. Praise the name of the living God. And so uh, verse 20 uh, Jesus is also commissioning us, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the age of, even to the end of the age. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. So we are seeing viewer, we've already been commissioned. And so each time we, we, we share the word of God, be it, uh, uh, wherever we are, in, in, in any form of gath gathering, even in your workplace, the Lord is commissioning us to share about, about him uh, because he's already given us the authority uh, uh, to do that. And he's saying he's, he's going to be with us. He's not going to leave us. He will never leave us, neither forsake us. He'll always be with us. And that is why we need to prepare. And we'll quickly go to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 3 to 8. Uh, and we are going to start reading. Then he spoke. That is Jesus. He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And we can see that like we can uh, say figuratively that that is a farmer. And he sowed some, and he sowed some uh, seed fell by the wayside and the birds came and delivered them and, and rewarded them, sorry. And verse five, some fell on stony places where they, did ha they, didn't, they, they didn't have much earth. They immediately sprang up because the hand that they, they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. We are talking of the seed. And some fell among the thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them seed but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop some a hundredfold some 60 some 30 he who has ear to hear let him hear and that is what the Lord is teaching us that we need to prepare our hearts to receive the spiritual seed. And, and, and to be able to, to seize the moment, we need uh, to, to, to seize the moment, our opportune moment, to walk with the Lord uh, circumspectively in faith, without wavering on the way, we, we, we find that we, we, will need, we will need to prepare our hearts. And when we are preparing our hearts, we will need spiritual gifts. How are we going to prepare our hearts? We are going to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. And how are
are we going to, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us? We see in, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1 and verse 4, we are seeing the Lord is, is helping the disciples to wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Because he knew the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. And he knew they already had so many laws because of the Old Testament, because of their forefathers. They had so much, uh, 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 so much spiritual uh, uh, building of consisting of laws. Do this, do not do this. And so he's telling them uh, uh, to go and tarry and wait until the Holy Spirit comes in them. And he empowers them to start now working the works of righteousness. And let us uh, quickly go to uh, Acts 1 and chapter, uh, chapter 1, sorry, and verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he, shall, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, he asked, he asked, he asked him, uh, they asked him, Lord, will you at this moment restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons. Praise the Lord. He's saying it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put his, uh, um, which the father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Praise the Lord, viewers. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Uh, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And so we are seeing in, in, in chapter 2 of uh, Acts, uh, verse 1, we are seeing when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were, all, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them uh, divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord, viewer. I would wish us to understand something. That in order for us to prepare our hearts to receive uh, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and, uh, and also to receive the commission that he has given us to go ye into the whole world and preach the goodness, good news of the kingdom of God, we, we, we see clearly that we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We, some of us came, came um, from backgrounds that knew no God or we had our own, our own uh, uh, made up gods. And, and so the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's able to to erase the memories and, uh, and, and set us free because uh, uh, the yokes are broken by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and yokes are, are, are removed from our minds. Yokes are, are, are destroyed and, and, and they are broken that, that we, we may be able to walk circumspectively before God and we will not uh, um, grieve the Holy Spirit because uh, James uh, 5, we may not be able to go there. James chapter 5 and verse 8, it is talking of how the Lord is soon coming. The coming of the Lord is so near. And so uh, we need to put on Christ and we can quickly rush, uh, rush to, to uh, the book of Romans. Romans where we will see that um, 
we need to put on Christ. We need to put on Christ and also be able to walk properly. Romans chapter uh, number 13 and from verse uh, 11 to 13. And it is telling us, put on Christ. And I would like us viewers to continue uh, focusing, knowing that we are still preparing our hearts to prepare the soil, the spiritual soil of our hearts, that we may be able to receive that which God has in store for us. Because he has already predestined that one day we are going to be preparing to go to preach the good news to the whole world. And so uh, verse uh, chapter Romans chapter 13 verse 11 it is telling us and do this knowing the time that now it is high time so we need to know the time because it is high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the night is fast spent the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly. I love this word. Let us walk properly. It's not that you're throwing your leg there or you're, you're walking like you're stumbling. He, it is talking of walking in day because the, the night is, all, is almost gone. And we are seeing that day is coming. And that is the day that Jesus Christ is almost coming. And we need to walk properly as in the day, not in reverie and drunkenness. In reverie, you, you, we are seeing that word. When you see the word reverie, we, the, it's talking of uh, it's talking of, of, of people in noisy places. You're, you're finding yourself in noisy places, uh, noisy, pl noisy places that uh, 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 people are taking alcohol and, 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 and people are engaging in funny behavior. And so uh, Romans is, uh, chapter 13, we are being, uh, uh, being admonished and we are being told, avoid such things, reverie and drunkenness and not in lewdness. You know, improper behavior uh, uh, connoting uh, 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 sexual immorality and, 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 uh, and also um, lust. At last, it can be the last of the flesh, last, last of the eye, and even the pride of life. Uh, and not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its last. Praise the Lord, viewers. So we, we are being told to put on Christ. You could be out there. You do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not welcomed the person of our Lord Jesus Christ into your life. We are already in, the, in, the, in December festivals, festivities. And uh, people are preparing, uh, 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 you know, for the season. And I'm sure many people will get drunk. People who are planning uh, because we are all, we are many, we are from different backgrounds. And so we need to know that Jesus Christ is coming back. And so in this time, we need to accept Jesus. Those that are not born again, we need to embrace Jesus, to embrace the message of Jesus. And you can repeat, you could be out there. You can repeat after me uh, uh, the sinner's prayer that you can pray and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for me on the cross. I pray that you forgive my sins. I am sorry I have sinned against you. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, and make, uh, I make you Lord and Savior. Make me your child. Write my name in the book, in the Lamb's Book of Life, and remove my name from, um, from the book of death. And so, Father, I'm going to pray uh, for those that have received you and those that are needy, that, Lord, you may intervene. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you in this time, that even in December times, Lord, people are going to stay alert in Jesus' mighty name. We will not fulfill the desires of our flesh during this time, but we will honor you. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, viewers.